What is going on everybody? I hope you are having a fantastic day today. If you recall from my previous video, which was the seven things I hate about my Dodge Challenger. Well, today's video is gonna be kind of the opposite. It's gonna be the seven things that I love about my 2017 Dodge Challenger 392 Hemi Scat Pack Shaker. Now, it was very difficult for me to come up with a list because there are a ton of things that I love about this car. It's truly been fantastic in these past five months of ownership. And I tried to come up with a list that was a little bit different than maybe anything you've seen in other other videos but of course some things you have heard of because if you buy a Dodge Challenger you buy it probably for a handful of reasons and some of those reasons cross over with other youtubers you may have seen but I still hope to provide a new take that maybe you haven't heard before so let's kick it off in no particular order the things I love about my Dodge Challenger let's start with the first thing I love about my Dodge Challenger now this feature I haven't heard anybody else talk about I haven't seen on any YouTube videos or any websites or brochures or anywhere really but it was something I noticed the first day of ownership when I picked up this car and that is the side marker lights and the image that they project onto the ground so if you notice when you're walking up to the car at night the side marker lights which are the red or orange lights that are kind of just reflective lights when you're driving down the road so that people see you in the Dodge Challenger scat pack these lights actually project a honeycomb bumblebee shape onto the ground and it's really subtle and not very noticeable but it's a a really cool Easter egg that Dodge put into this car that I really really appreciate I don't think anybody else really notices this but the owner of the vehicle but nonetheless when I walk up to this car and I see the little honeycomb bumblebee image on the ground next to the projector lights it's really cool and it just adds a little bit of character that this car comes with it's not something that would convince me to purchase this car but it's another thing that just makes you appreciate the car that you purchased now I'm not a hundred percent certain if this comes with every scat pack I assume it does but um, if you don't have this light and you have a scat pack just leave it in the comments below I'm curious to see if uh, other scat pack owners have the same feature now the second thing I love about this car has to do with the four-cylinder mode so if you have the eight-speed ZF automatic transmission when you're driving on the freeway or I think it works on regular roads as well and city driving if you're coasting at like a certain miles per hour like let's say you're going 60 miles per hour on the freeway well it's gonna shut off four of the eight cylinders so essentially you're a Subaru Impreza driving down the freeway now that may be a little bit of an exaggeration but it does cut you down to just four cylinders and that way you get to conserve your fuel and improve your fuel economy because of that feature I think I'm able to get 20.2 miles per gallon on mixed city and highway driving now if you recall my previous Mercedes I made a video about it but the fuel economy on that car was somewhere I think between 22 to 24 if I recall call correctly maybe even closer to 20 miles per gallon that car had a 3.5 liter v6 this car has a 6.4 liter v8 very big difference but fuel economy is just about the same so I really appreciate this four cylinder mode I'm surprised that more manufacturers don't go down this route just because it doesn't make sense to have all eight cylinders when you're just in cruise control on the freeway but you have them there in case you need it in case some Prius tries to lap you so thank you Dodge I really appreciate that feature and it's definitely saved me a lot of gas money now the third thing that I really love about this car has to do with the sound and I don't just mean the speakers in the car I mean the exhaust note and the engine now when you're driving down the road the exhaust and the engine don't get in the way of your comfort so you can be driving down the road listening to music having a conversation and none of that other stuff gets in the way but when you decide to unleash some of that v8 power and you step on the gas the sound that comes out of that engine and the exhaust work so well together that it's just exhilarating and it's it's almost like you don't want to let go of the gas because you want to keep listening to that sound I mean, the way the exhaust burbles every time it shifts gears and the way the engine just sounds like it's going to tear you apart, it sounds like a monster. It's a lion that's running down the road and it's glorious and that's the only way I can describe it and I think the only way you can experience it is by sitting in the passenger seat or the driver's seat and stepping on the gas because it really is so hard to describe over camera that, um, you know, I'll play a clip but it, 
it doesn't do it justice. And uh, I think Dodge did an amazing job because it's not too powerful that it just gets in the way and annoys you when you're driving, but it's there when you need it. And my God, is it there. Now, the fourth thing I love about this car is, of course, the looks. Now, everybody mentions this because the looks of this car are probably one of the main reasons why you would buy it. I mean, just looking at it, it screams American muscle car. I mean, this is, of course, out of all three muscle cars, the most retro looking. And it really is, if you want that throwback vehicle, you go to the Dodge Challenger. I mean, from every angle you look at this car, it's menacing, it's mean, it's angry, it's powerful, it screams muscle. All these words that you can describe this vehicle, it really does scream that from every single angle that you look at this car. And that's one of the reasons I really love it. From the way the headlights kind of sit into the grill and the way the tail lights shine at night with the LEDs and the spoiler and the curves down the side of the car. It's truly a beautiful automobile. And I'm, I'm really, I give my compliments to Dodge for being able to take an old retro design from the 70s and transform it into something that looks modern but retro at the same time. And that really isn't easy to do because I think Ford and Camaro have tried to do that, but they've they've chosen to go for the more modern approach. And this car doesn't alienate the old school users, but it also provide something new and different and refreshing. That's honestly why this car hasn't really been refreshed for 10 to 11 years. The design ages very well because it really is from the 70s. So, I mean, I can go on and on about the styling of this car, but it really is amazing and one of the things I love about this car. Going off of the looks, the fifth thing I love about this car is the way people look at this car. So when I'm parked on the street and I'm approaching this vehicle from a distance, I can always catch one or two people that walk by the car and do a double or triple take and even look inside and out like they examine this car as if it's some sort of exotic automobile they've never seen in their life. And you see a lot of these challengers on the road, but for some reason it still kind of commands respect and you'll always see people coming up to it. An example of that is the other day I was sitting in a parking lot just kind of waiting for somebody to come out. And this family walks by and the, the kid who was probably about 15, 16 years old, he walks by the car and he does a triple take just to like examine to make sure he processes all of it. I mean, he goes up to the emblem to see what car it is and, and he thinks that this is some like extraordinary vehicle when at the end of the day, it is just a scat pack. It's not like a Dodge Demon. And that's what I love is that although this car isn't a Hellcat, a lot of people actually confuse it to be a Hellcat or a Dodge Demon. A lot of different car shows I've gone to when I have my car kind of positioned out and it's got the hood open and it looks really aggressive and mean, I've had a ton of people come up to me and ask, oh, is this the Dodge Demon or, oh, is this the Hellcat? And, and they ask a lot of these questions. And of course, the more knowledgeable people know that this is a 392 Hemi, it's a 6.4 liter, uh, and they still love it and they still respect it a lot. And they're like, oh, I wish I had your car. But then you'll always catch those people that are like, wait, is this the Hellcat? Is this the wide body? Like they they don't know. And, and just having that curiosity is really some of the, one of the things that I really love about this car because it's just fun. Like you get to talk about it and, and people respect your car and they walk up to it and they're they're wanting to even clean it. And it's just it's having that kind of attention is really cool because I hate having attention, but when my car has attention, I think it's pretty cool. Now, the sixth thing that I love about this car has to do with the sound system. And this time, I mean the actual speakers in the car. So my car does not have the premium Harman Kardon sound system, which I really wanted because I know Harman Kardon makes a very good sound system. And I had that on my Mercedes. And honestly, I didn't want to have another car without a Harman Kardon sound system. But here we are today. I actually have the Alpine sound system, which I, uh, when I test drove the car a few years ago, I wasn't very impressed and I thought, oh, my car's not going to have a very good sound system. Well, I am thoroughly impressed with the speaker setup. I think I only have about six speakers in the car. It does, I'm pretty sure, have a subwoofer in the back. I'm not certain on it though. But nonetheless, I just want to say that if you don't go with the Harman Kardon sound system, you will not be upset because it really provides a lot of bass. It's very clear sounding and honestly, Honestly, the Alpine took me by surprise. If the car you're looking at comes with the Alpine, definitely don't just kind of blow it off because it's a really good sound system. It may not be a Harman Kardon, but it's definitely not the standard sound system you get in like a Honda Civic. Now for the seventh and final thing that I love about this car, and that is the daily drivability of this vehicle. So this is my daily driver. Um, probably up until about a month from now, I will be purchasing an all-wheel drive car for the winter time, and that video 
video will be released later, but this is my daily driver for the past five months, and I've put probably over six or 7,000 miles on it already. And this car can easily be a daily driver. I mean, it's super comfortable, it's large, you have tons of leg room, tons of space to stretch out. I'm not that big, I'm only about five foot nine, but honestly, the Mercedes was getting to be a little bit small for me. Uh, the back seat space was small, the front seat space was a little bit tight, it was a fantastic car, but I was starting to get a little bit cramped. In this car, you actually have the opposite feel. I feel a little bit small in this vehicle because it is very large on the inside. I mean, if you think about it, it's an E-Class cab cabin with two doors. It just it's huge. On top of that, this car actually has really good build quality. I was really surprised when I came from a Mercedes to a Dodge that I thought this car was going to have really cheap parts, kind of beat me up on the road, but you know, it's all worth it because it has that 6.4 liter. Honestly, that's not true. This car is very livable and daily drivable. The sound deadening in this car is actually really good and took me by surprise because being a coupe, this doesn't have frames on the windows. It's frameless. Uh, and so naturally, I thought that would allow for more road noise to get into the cabin and it really doesn't. When you shut the door, the windows will stay open for just a second so you can hear what the outside sounds like. Then the windows go up and you can instantly notice a night and day difference from what it sounded like on the outside to what it sounds like on the inside. And it's really good. You don't really hear the tire noise. You don't really hear any road noise. You just hear the car, the engine, and the exhaust note. And even that isn't overpowering, like I mentioned before. I love the amenities they threw in here. I mean, it has a heated steering wheel, it has heated and ventilated seats. Although they might not be the most powerful, they are still included in your car. And the heated steering wheel actually works amazing. In the wintertime, once it's like below, I think 50 degrees, it'll turn the heated steering wheel on. And within about 30 seconds, it'll be warm enough that I almost have to shut it off. Something else they threw in the car they didn't have to is the remote start stop feature. I mean, from inside the house, I can turn this car on when it's cold and really freezing outside. And then I get inside the car, it's got the heated seats on, the heated steering wheels on, the thermostat's set to like 80 degrees, and it's nice and toasty inside within like, two minutes. They did an amazing job with the interior parts and quality. So the, the dashboard is all soft touch rubbery material. Same with on the door seal. The center console is leather and padded. You've got suede Alcantara seats. I mean, these are all features that you didn't think you would be able to get for a car that starts at like a base price of $40,000. Now I know the scat pack does come with like cloth seats, but some of these other features can be included for not that much extra. I mean, this car MSRP is 52,000, which I think is still a steal because you're getting a 6.4 liter with 485 horsepower and heated wheel, remote start stop, suede seats. I mean, it's just, it really does pack a lot of cool features and amenities that you would expect from a luxury vehicle, but it's a muscle car. If you're in the market for a daily drivable car with a ton of horsepower, this is the vehicle to get, folks. I drive this car every day on the freeway in stop and go traffic, and honestly, it's like I'm driving a luxury car that happens to have 485 horsepower. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Honestly, this car has been a joy to live with for the past five months, and I don't think I could pick any other car that I would rather have than this one. And honestly, it was very difficult for me to condense this list, but uh, hopefully it provided you some insight and maybe some new things that you hadn't heard about before. Well, until next time, I hope you catch me on Instagram at Schwazy underscore and uh, like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. But I'll catch you all in the next video. Take care. Have a wonderful day.